Hey everyone, I'm Nate. And I'm Abby. We're the RC Sailors and we're at the airfield today to test just a little helicopter that is as close to toy grade as I ever want to get. This is called the Isheen H101. You can find it on Amazon for around $30 to $35. And in many cases, this is the type of RC that when I introduce myself to somebody for the first time and they say something like, oh, is that a drone you're flying? And I say, yes. They say, well, I, uh, I or my brother or my friend has one of those little helicopters. But boy, I just couldn't fly that. I don't think I could ever fly a drone. This is that type of helicopter that they were probably talking about. If you're interested, we'll have this link in the description box below. But let's talk about the type of helicopter that we have here. The technology on this is aging itself now. It's amazing technology for a toy, but it is getting a bit older. And uh, tomorrow we're going to take a look at a more advanced helicopter in this size, but it's about double the price. This is called a coaxial fly bar helicopter. Now we've seen these before, and I'm sure you guys have seen this type of thing before too. It actually has a canopy that goes on here, but I have that off to show you the inside for now. And it's, as I said earlier, about as simple as it gets. Coaxial means you have these two sets of blades. This one just spins to help provide lift. This one spins generally the opposite direction, and, and that's the case on this too. But it also has the ability to move, whereas this one cannot. Just a little bit of flex in the prop, but this one moves a lot. And the thing on top is called a fly bar. Uh, what that is is a weighted bar that provides a self-stabilizing act while it's flying. It'll do a lot of this back and forth until it kind of centers, okay? Uh, that is just using centrifugal force to kind of center balance if you don't give it any input. Fairly easy to fly if you're inside with no wind. Now we're sitting outside today because it's overcast with very little sun compared to a bright sunny day because this also flies on an infrared signal. You see this little light down here with the transmitter. And honestly, this is about the worst type of technology you'd want to see on an RC because you think RC, you think flying outside. And this, you're going to struggle to fly outside. The sun infrared waves will interfere with the infrared signal that this will emit and receive. So uh, a lot of times people will get this for, from Walmart for Christmas and they fly it through the winter maybe okay because there's very little sun. They take it out on a sunny day and it gets a mind of its own and it just flies away full throttle and the wind catches it and it's gone. You have to fly these inside. We're going to show you what it will do outside on an overcast day and if we have to finish the video inside we'll go in the clubhouse and do that. But I wanted to talk about this with you guys because I really kind of frown upon this type of RC nowadays because there are so many advancements in the technology with 2.4 gigahertz you can fly and drive outside with no interference and fly literally hundreds of these things together uh, but with this technology infrared coaxial fly bar it's really setting yourself up for a bad experience it's going to be no matter who you are no matter how much you like this stuff it'll be a struggle to keep it in the air. A few good things, it does come with a LiPo rechargeable battery. I think that's about a 250 milliamp single cell. Uh, the charge cable plugs into the bottom of the helicopter like so. And then the, just USB to your computer, whatever. And uh, the battery can come out, but it's kind of like glued in there. So I recommend just leaving it plugged in and charge through the bottom. It does have an on off switch and you have the included instructions which are just pretty basic. So I don't hate this, but I just want you guys to understand that you can do a lot better with your money. And, and realistically, if I could pay $20 for something like this, or put $20 towards a uh, $60 RC, I'd rather put the $20 toward the $60 RC. Uh, and this actually comes in around 35 or something. So you can imagine, I'm probably not gonna give this a raving review, but let's fly it. We'll be very lucky if this will even receive input for the commands because the interference from the sun, but let's give it a shot. Yeah, no, no input here. I did, let me get closer. 
I can't see it. And it's flying away. <laughs> so I'm only able to control it at about a foot away because of the interference from the sun. And even then, it's difficult to have any level of control over this. Uh, and as it gets further away, it basically just locks in whatever input it had as it loses the signal. So let's try that again. We may we may have a flyaway here. Yeah, so yeah. Now I want to kind of demonstrate before we do that how the fly bar works. Uh, you see the two propellers? It's kind of hard, but you can see them. The top one is moving. And, and the fly bar you can really see, at least I can. As I move this, that fly bar adjusts to try to self-balance. A lot of times it gets stuck and hits the prop though. It can. <laughs> That's really annoying. Well, yes. yeah. So I have a bit of wind. Oh, I didn't know you were going to let go. Oh, see, I, I just, just landed lost, it. I lost wind. control. Yeah. For all of you newcomers, welcome to the clubhouse. Okay, <laughs> should have a little more luck in here. Really, the objective with something like this is just keep to it hovering. To make the paper towels unroll. That's the objective. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the interesting thing is the left stick is just throttle up and down. I cannot do yaw at all. The right stick actually is my yaw. Control. Yes. Oh, it's going the wrong way. Go. <laughs> you knocked it, it off. off the table. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of very. It's really confusing because I'm not used to having yaw control on the right stick. There's just nothing on the left stick. That's weird. As you give it the input, you can go slow or fast, which is nice. And I do like the little light on front. And the forward and back movement is controlled by this little motor on the back of the helicopter, which I didn't really point out. Let me get a little closer here. I'll show you guys. There's a tiny brushed motor facing vertically, which is so funny, on the back of this helicopter. And as I give it reverse or forward, that motor on the back just spins in one direction or the other. And depending on how fast I want to go, I push forward all the way. That's, that's as fast as I can get it to go. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this isn't fun. I do enjoy this. You know, I love aviation and really anything that flies, and especially if I can control it, I enjoy. And I can find fun in just about anything myself, but I don't want to see you guys go out there and buy this and it ruin your RC experience. And not just this one. This is probably, this little Yixing one that I'm flying, is probably one of the best versions of this that I've ever seen. But there's so much better in the RC hobby that you can spend your hard earned money on. None of us are rich. Those of us that like the RC hobby, I, I don't I don't know any millionaires that fly RCs and uh, you know enjoy it. So if you are a millionaire, well, maybe maybe buy me a nice RC. <laughs> I just wanted I just wanted to show you guys because there's so many times I hear that story. When I meet somebody, they're flying, they're watching me fly or telling me their crash story. And so many times it's, it's talking about one of these, a coaxial fly bar helicopter, about as simple as it gets. And if, if you're the type of person that this was your first RC experience, tell us about it in the comments section. Did it ruin it for you or did it inspire you? to get something a bit nicer. Have you had anything like this? And if so, how long has it been since you've flown it? Abby, I think you need to fly this before the battery's completely shot. Right. <laughs> I think you'll find it very confusing because okay. it's very different than uh, the stuff we're used to flying. Look the left stick first and realize there is no left and right movement. It is just throttle control. Okay. So Abby's at the controls now. And it has a little bit of yaw. Uh, <laughs> it just kind of goes on its oh, own. That which, is confusing. Yes, it is. Oh my yes, goodness. it is. I didn't think it would be. It is Look though. Look at me knocking magazines off. Yeah, good job. Oh, oh all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't fly this. It's, uh, it's confusing, isn't it? It's a mind boggler. Yes. But you're in the air. I'm in the air. And it's, as I said, more of a struggle than it is fun, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're used to flying other RCs, it is. Right. Oh, man. 
<laughs> the Phantom Doom. I think if a person learned on this with those controls and then then stepped into a nicer yeah. RC, or even any drone really, it would confuse you because your yaw control would then be on the left stick, yeah. which is where it should be. So if you're a, a mode two flyer. We have a heli that we're gonna put on the channel tomorrow from yes. Horizon. Yes. And I'm really excited. It's a little bit smaller than this one, but no fly bar and it should be a little bit more agile than this. Yeah. And then is that your battery? Oh. Hey. No, I'm just trying to kill us. Uh, okay. Yeah, it has to be because that's full throttle. Okay. So I will land it. Okay, sounds good to me. <laughs> As I said, I don't hate this uh, by any means, but I just, I've heard that story a hundred times or more. And I, I, I don't want to uh, discourage people from getting into the hobby because their first RC was something like this. And, and in many times that's the case. Um, when this technology first came out, the other types of technology and drones and airplanes and even helicopters wasn't there. In fact, drones probably didn't even really exist except for the people that were just creating them in their own shops. And that was before YouTube and everything. Now it, it's, it's surprising to see a company still doing this, uh, but that means the reason they're doing it is because there are people out there buying it. And I just want to know uh, why a person would still want to buy something like this when there are so many other options. I believe it's probably due to lack of knowledge. You know, a parent buying an RC helicopter for their kid uh, for birth, or birthday or Christmas, maybe pick one of these up uh, on accident or just in a quick, shopping, I really don't care what I get for them. Um, I'm just gonna buy this because it's under $50, happy birthday. And online, they kind of hide the fact that they're infrared. Like, yes. in the small print, it'll say infrared, when in today's technology, you should be able to safely assume that everything's 2.4 gigahertz. I agree. So they kind of sneak it in on A you. little bit, yeah. Now, I don't mean to put Isheen down too bad. They really do make good toy grade products and sometimes borderline hobby grade stuff. And uh, if you're going to get a coaxial fly bar infrared helicopter, this is probably one of the best ones you can get now. Uh, and you're backed on Amazon with our link below. But really, I just wanted to talk about this with you guys because we don't do this type of thing very often. We'll probably never do anything like this again, a little coaxial fly bar helicopter. And uh, just wanted to hear your experiences with this, your opinion of this type of helicopter. And would you buy anything like this now in today's market? Let us know. We can't wait to hear from you guys in the comments section below. And before we go, to those of you that stuck this out, you'll probably hear us mention this more in some upcoming videos. But uh, in kind of a celebration for my birthday, I'll be 30, uh, September 1st. So Abby and I have been trying to decide what we wanted to do to celebrate, and I love RC stuff. There's no way of getting around that. And uh, so we decided to meet up with some friends, uh, which basically is you guys. In August, August 26th on Sunday in Muncie, Indiana at the AMA Airfield. Uh, we've already called ahead to say we might have a few people show up. I have no idea. This is not an event. There are uh, control line and free flight events going on, but we are allowed to fly with other people at the open sites. Yeah, so we have plans to be there and yes. you all get mad if we go somewhere and don't tell you guys. Well, we were gonna go and just hang out with some friends. Uh, and then I said, you know, we should, we should tell everyone that we'll be there. So if you're in the area or maybe you live out west and you couldn't make it to RCS Fest, just come fly with us. Or if you just wanna hang out, you can, but uh, you know, we plan on doing some flying and just visiting and just enjoying the hobby and enjoying uh, camaraderie with everyone. So that's again, Sunday, uh, Sunday, August 26th. From 12 to 4. Uh, 12 to 4, yeah, mm -hmm. in Muncie, Indiana at the AMA Airfield. You're welcome to come out. I don't know if they'll charge you to get in. I don't know. We've never been there. So uh, maybe do a, a bit of research on and that. And you have to have AMA to fly. Yeah, if you fly there, absolutely, yes, AMA. Uh, so So we will be there out. and uh, hope to see you guys come out too. Yes, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye! Bye.